Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at a prototyping board for the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can see on my bench. So the Raspberry Pi Pico solders onto the proto board directly to the castellated pad, so it's very low profile. And on, on the proto board, we have VSYS inputs. So that's a 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts to input that will feed the, the Raspberry Pi Pico. And the output of the Pico, output of the power supply, the buck boost power supply, will give us 3.3 volts along this bus and ground, and ground on the top, and 3.3 volts along here. Now we could grab any one of the pins along here. We could snag any one of the pins from the Pico to our prototyping area. Now on the back, all the pins are silk screened, and we have access to TP1 to TP6. Those are test points. So we could add on circuits, an IC, or we could put a module. We could solder a module in here and then snag 3.3 volts to run it and then we can hook it up to our, our Raspberry Pi Pico. So now we have to grab an enclosure, we have to pick an enclosure where we can put this uh, prototyping board into. Okay, here's an enclosure that we could use to fit our proto board into. And you can see it has two tabs on either side with four holes so you can mount it, you can mount it down on a wall and it works out very well because once it's mounted it's tamper-proof. Nobody could get into the inside of the box because the screws to take apart the box are on the back. There's the four screws. When you take them off, then she comes apart. So inside we have a typical uh, slots for circuit boards and this is our lid. Now the lid, we could actually mount our proto board onto the lid and then fit the lid onto the box and then we have lots of room in the box for batteries or for other circuit boards. Okay, I mounted my proto board on the lid of the enclosure using four screws. Now these are 440 screws, quarter inch in length. And so now it's very low profile. It's on the lid. So now I can just apply it to the box and put the four screws in. So next we're going to have a look at some other options. Okay, I cut a piece of Euro board so it will fit into my enclosure in a horizontal position. And I'm using the proto board stacking adapters. So I've got four of them, one in each corner. So it's very solid in there. Now I could build a lot of circuits on my proto board. So all I have to do is snap it off right here. Now these are this long so it will fit into different size of boxes. So I snap each one off so the lid would fit. Now if my lid didn't have the proto board I could just put the lid on but because there's a proto board you'd have to grind it down or file it down just a, a bit more so, so the lid would fit. So we snap them off, we put the lid on and then we close it up and we got ourselves a nice little clean project. Now the enclosure has slots all the way around the perimeter of the box so we could cut Vero board to fit those slots. We could cut it, we can mount Vero board this way or this way and I have some examples. Here's another box that I built. Same thing, it has slots all the way around the perimeter and there's my uh, Vero board with my circuit on there and that just slides in. And now on the top we have a terminal strip with through-hole connections. It goes through the chassis, so it's a through-hole chassis mounted uh, terminal block. Now we can run wires down for power. We can have power, external power fed down into the box and have GPIO in and out of the box through the terminal strip. Okay, here's another idea if you're running your project on batteries. I have an impact switch, so if I get a tap, it'll turn on the circuitry. So now you don't have to drill any holes in your in your box for the for the switch. So you just have to tap it to, to turn on the power. So it's going to feed power to your circuitry, and it will sense activity. As long as there's activity, it will stay powered. And when there's no activity for a certain period of time, it'll time out. It'll, this the LED starts blinking. That means it's going to time out, and then she shuts off. Now there's no current consumption from the battery. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on this Raspberry Pi proto board. And you can see there's enough room to plug in a USB connector so you could do upgrades on your Raspberry Pi Pico. You can see I have a LED blinking. I'm running PicoMite on the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's a free download online. So if you're using the Raspberry Pi Pico, this makes it into a very clean project.